Yes. It is 12 o'clock. What? On time today. Hello, 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 Unleashed Tribe. I am super excited to be joining you today with, listen, a whole boss, okay? Like, a whole boss is over there dancing, right? We are about to have fun, um, but I'm pretty sure your life is going to get snatched in the process of the fun, okay? So just go ahead and be ready for it. Be here for it. Don't, you know, don't reject it. <laughs> be ready for it. Grab your lunch if you don't have it. I don't really have my lunch, but I do have my um, kombucha drink. Uh, if you're with me and I have some Cheetos that I might eat if I if I don't if it's not too distracting but we'll see we're gonna play it by ear right um because I somehow skipped breakfast this morning I went to vote with no ID um so that didn't work in my favor um <laughs> good time so I'm gonna go back later right but I think I left my brain but it happens it happens so come on into the lunchtime room come on into the room we are going to get this thing started and yeah so welcome, welcome. <laughs> tell us all about you what who 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 you is what you do how you do it all the mad give us the magical intro to get this thing started <laughs> Right. So I am Maisha Rush. I am the owner and lead consultant of Rush Consulting Firm, where we help build, brand, and expand businesses. I am also the homeschooling mommy mogul of 10 beautiful babies with one on the way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we building a tribe over here. We building a tribe. <laughs> But we like to help people focus on the stability and the sustainability of their business. So that's me. Wow. Congratulations on a, it's another one. Congratulations on that. That is like super excited. Somebody has to multiply. Okay. And it ain't your girl. So I'm glad it's you. I'm glad. You know, I'm <laughs> I got you. I got your back. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us about Rush Consulting. You know, what is it? When did it start? How did it start? Why did it start? Get Let us get all up in your business. Let us get all, all of it now. Okay. Well, um, we were established in 2009 and we were all encompassing when we first started. Um, we were trying to help everybody everywhere in the community, like we are helping people find jobs, helping them do their resumes, helping them build their business. And it was exhausting. Not to mention the fact that we were nonprofit and I was doing it by myself. So um, in 2012, me and my husband, I think we had four children at the time. We found ourselves homeless. So we were living out of our Durango. And we did this for, we lived out of the truck for three months. So we shifted between the truck and getting a hotel room so we can wash our bodily parts, wash our children. In the mornings, we would take them to like Burger King or something, grab them something cheap and wash them up in the bathroom and send them off to school. So it was a real struggle for a minute. But out of that is how we created this particular platform to help small businesses. And so how that happened is, my daughter's trying to wave. So how that happened is, <laughs> We couldn't, so we have degrees and we have certifications. We've got a plethora of experience, but we could not find a job anywhere. Nobody would hire us. Nobody was hiring. And so I was researching what business can we start? What can business can we start to get on our feet? So in the meantime, I'm researching. My husband is working these odd and end jobs with the, uh, the day laborers. And so he's making daily money, but it's paying for our car note on the truck, which was primarily our rent, really. So, you know, it was a little bit of a struggle, but we started a cleaning company. Um, that was our first business. We started a cleaning company and the cleaning company took off really quickly. Like we did things that most people didn't do. Um, and it took off so fast that we are like, okay, we can't handle this. We're not gonna do it anymore. Sold it, flipped it. 
started another business. So I did a jewelry making business. I did a medical billing business and I was just constantly, whatever I started, I was able to flip it and go on to the next thing. And then I got this idea. I was like, this is what our community needs, right? Something that we can build and sustain ourselves. Cause that's what we did. We sustained ourselves on our business. And that's how Rush Consulting, Consulting Firm in this entity was started because out of all my research, I learned how to run this type of business, how to run this type of business, how to run this type of business. And not only had that knowledge, I applied that knowledge to starting different businesses and then being able to build them and flip them and move on to the next thing. And voila, here we are um, years later, what is it, 2012 to 28 years later, um, successful, prosperous, um, and we couldn't be happier, like just taking that leap and just trusting ourselves. Cause a lot of times we were like, what well, do we get a job now? Like what happens now? You know, so, but you got to trust yourself in the process. And now I'm just like this walking business encyclopedia and dictionary. And I'm just out here to help the world. <laughs> so that's how we started. And now we're businesses later and children later and much, much more happiness and success later. Here we stand here to help the next person. Wow. Did y'all hear that though? The resiliency in the journey. Okay. Because who knew? First of all, who knew? I ain't right. find that in my research. Okay. So like, <laughs> who knew? Thank you for the transparency there. Thank you for the honesty there. Thank you for being a true example of putting in the work, right? <laughs> Showing up. Yep. Um, and doing it in spite of all the things that are going on, right? Because I can only imagine how tough it is to be homeless, just the two people, but with, you know, four children and trying to navigate that and thinking, even the mindset of that too, because I'm sure there were some times it's like, am I a horrible parent? Because yeah. Yeah. we ain't got nowhere to stay. <laughs> now what, right? <laughs> now what, right? What's next? And when you think of like, degrees and certifications and all these these um alphabet suits it's like why don't I, why why i can't why why it's not working for me so right let me make it work for myself so <laughs> next question of how friend how how 10 with one on the way right wife still a human running a business we need to know like some systems, some secrets, some, some hacks. I don't know. Snatch our edges because how? I have not one kid and I'm tired reading the bio. <laughs> how do you do it? <laughs> oh, our biggest thing, the biggest thing for us is schedules. So, and I'm going to tie that into business really quick. So when you go to work, um, when you're working for somebody else, you, you know what you have to do. Like you have this job description that you know you have to fulfill daily and you know the things that you have to do and you go to work and you get them done, right? But when people start building their business, they it's like scheduling goes out the door. It's like people always say, you know, I don't want to work for anybody. But the truth of the matter is you work for everybody as an entrepreneur. You work for everybody. Everybody who comes to you, you have to answer questions. You have to cater to. You have to put on that smiling face. So I want to first shed that facade that you don't want to work for anybody. As an entrepreneur, you work for everybody. Everybody who is in your market, you work for them. Um, and so for us, scheduling is so important. And not just in business, it's in our, in our house. So we have a cooking schedule, a cleaning schedule, a laundry schedule, a schooling schedule, a vacation schedule. <laughs> an activity schedule and let me tell you something i want to hire somebody to do those schedules sometimes because i try and do them in three month increments because it's so exhaustive and so i do them in three months so when i sit down to do those next three months i'm sitting there for about two hours because i try and shift everybody's chores you know so they don't have the same chore switching the laundry days switching the schooling and then you got to build a curriculum so hands down scheduling and it works for me mostly in business because I have less than four hour days, four days a week. And how that works is we need to get more structure. And I see, I say we need to be all inclusive because I never like to say, well, you need to do this. And um, so we need to get more structured. So when we know that we need to do something, write that stuff down, get it out of your head, 
people think, oh, I remember this. I got to remember this. And those are the exact things that you forget. So first of all, write everything down and then itemize what you're going to do first, how long it's going to take you to do this. And if you can't do that, then create a schedule. Okay. When I get up at 9 a.m., I need to do A, B, and C. By 10 o'clock, I need to shift to do C, uh, D, E, and F. By 11 o'clock, I need to shift again. And so that helps keep you focused because if you're looking at the clock, you're not going to twiddle, you know, you're not going to play on Facebook if you know that you want to have this task done by 10 o'clock so you can move on and you don't move on until you get it done. So it's either A, going to make you get it done or B, is going to make you feel horrible that you didn't get it done and didn't hold yourself accountable, which is another thing, self-accountability, right? Yeah, self-accountability. What did you do today? What did you really do today? Sometimes we got to really look at ourselves and be like, you could have done better. You know, you were supposed to sit down and do this, but then you got distracted. You allowed yourself to get distracted. You didn't get distracted. You allowed yourself to get distracted. Self-accountability. Like it's those key words that keep you um, on task and focused and knocking stuff out. And your days can be shorter and your work can be better and you get more done. So schedules. I say all that to say, schedules <laughs> listen but it needs to be said right schedules okay so um i will drop a gym and i'm actually to drop a gym so for me um <laughs> i don't have as elusive of a schedule but i started out with schedules by using simple like an agenda right and then i upgraded as time upgraded that was what 2000 I don't know, six, seven. Um, I started with scheduling because I was at the time um, in school, take care of my mom, an athlete, a very dedicated church member, and trying to like get my life together for what am I doing after high school. So I was like a serious kid. So I had agendas. Took, the, took that same agenda system to college. Once I went to graduate school, I upgraded to like okay, agenda and Google Calendar, or I think I was had Outlook at the time. So agenda and Outlook. Um, and then now I, I've gone away with my paper. I do use my board sometimes, but I, it's all digitized, but I just use the, you know, the calendar on the phone. And then I use Asana for taxing, like tasking, like putting in my tasks. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my, like, y'all know, if it ain't on the schedule, I have to be like tapped up of thirst. Tabitha, read a book. Tabitha, sit down somewhere. Everything goes on calendar. Yep. So can you, what What are some like tools? Um, does this three month calendar, like is it paper? Is there an app? What What do you use? So our three month calendar is on paper because I have little ones. Um, yeah. It's all printed out. And so it's all over the place. So in addition to, um, just like we run our business, in addition to them knowing what they have to do. So if someone has the living room, there's an itemized list in the living room that says, did I vacuum the floor? Did I clean the windowsill? Did I dust the blind? Did I, you know what I mean? So, and this is, this is help structuring them. So when they get older, they don't struggle like we did and had to figure it out as we got older. So now as they're little, so again, you do the schedule, it's on paper for them. They know what they have to do. And then when they go do it, they see their checklist to make sure they got it all done. Um, so that's on paper. Um, as far as um, planning out my day, I created a planner. It's for sale. <laughs> so, so we have a planner that you know I work out of, and it's itemized every single day, and then it's it's docked every hour starting at 7 a.m. and um, done. You should be done by 10 a.m. It's got motivation on the side, some extra tasks that you thought of through the day, and then one thing I want to point out that a lot of people don't do is. Um, I like to tell my clients to create a to-done list. Ooh. A to-done list at the end of the day. Because, right, listen, we create these long, comprehensive to-do lists. And then we get one or two things done on a list. And then we feel like crap. We're like, I only got two things done off this list. There's 30 things on this list. But if you sit down at night before you go to bed or relax in your day, and you write down all the things you to-done that day, You've done 50 things and 48 of them not on your to-do list. And so what that helps do is help, help keep you motivated, right? Because you're like, oh, I did do something. I did this and I did this. So instead of beating yourself up about what you didn't get done on your to-do list, you create a whole to-done list about what you did get done. 
Wow. So, <laughs> my daughter's beating me up. <laughs> okay, come on with the to done list. I, I'm on that now. Thank yep. you. For that. You know, if nobody else was blessed on here by the to done list, I was because my to do list. <laughs> oh, my to do list is often taller than me, and I'm always defeated, yep. or oftentimes defeated. Like, oh, I didn't put a dent in this, but. Let me just tell you what I did do. Yep. So um, to done list. Okay, you all. I put the planner link in the comments. I just went and found it. Okay. <laughs> because that may be a resource for someone here. So how did you know? So you you broke it down on how you got to, to the consulting firm because you had done built about 10, 11 businesses. <laughs> And and flip them things, and then it was like, you know what? I might can can teach someone else. But let's talk about the niching down process. I, I think that's what it sounded like. Of you know, we was helping on resumes, was help people get jobs. We was doing this, we was doing that, we was doing third, and we were burnt out doing it. How did you know when you wanted to shift from doing all the all the? And what was that process looking? How did that process kind of play out? So one thing that I always try and tell people is um, people don't value free. They appreciate free. They don't value the free. So what we were doing in the beginning is we were just helping people with their resume. We were helping find them jobs. We were getting lists and stuff. And not that it's necessary, but the fact that you never get a thank you back, you're like, well, you was welcome. Mood. <laughs> Listen, you was welcome. Um, but not only that, it helps you when you when you shift over, you realize you're giving stuff to people for free that they don't work for. They have nothing to lose. And that's where you lose your value. So when you're giving them stuff for free, it's like, oh, okay, thank you. They appreciate it, but they don't value it because they didn't have to do anything to get it. So when you make people work for something, they'll actually do the work. So even when I first started, we shifted over into the consulting and I was doing free consultations. Um, People weren't going to work. I sit here, do all this research for you. I put it all together. I sit there, I give you an hour of my time and I'm giving you the, I'm giving you everything that you need to go. And then I'm checking back in with you a week later. Oh no, I didn't get it done a month later. No, I haven't gotten to it. Six months later, I decided to change my mind. Yep. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> you said, huh? You did what? Let, let me give you my cash app for a love gift, sis. Thanks. <laughs> but... <laughs> So I learned that people don't value free. If they don't work for it, then they're not going to do it. And so with businesses, we learned that businesses are often, especially in the Black community, businesses are often built on necessity, not luxury. It's not that you wake up one morning and say, <laughs> well, you wake up one morning. Oh, my bad. You wake up one morning and say, I have a great job. Let me start a business. Nope. Most businesses are started as a necessity, not a luxury. And since you feel like you need to start that business, you need this to work, then you'll invest in yourself and you will actually do the work if you want to. It's always if you want to. And so I, I'm, I'm really big on self-accountability. So and I'm never one that says, well, I have 10 children. If I can do it, you can do it. Because I don't know your life. Your schedule, you were telling me growing up and as a teenager going to college, I'm looking like, girl, what? I would <laughs> never. <laughs> you know, so what's heavy to you? I mean, what's heavy to me is not heavy to you. And so yeah. this is not heavy to me. So I will never say, if I can do it, you can. But what I will say is if you want to, you will. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. So that's how I knew to make the shift when I was overexerting myself and I wasn't seeing the like oh. they just going on. So when I didn't see the benefit, when I wasn't serving where I felt like I should be serving, then it's time to shift. Oh, and I think I just posted today. Don't stay where you're uncomfortable, where you're unsatisfied. It's time to move on. It's time to shift over to Oh, but sorry. Wow. <laughs> My edges. edges. Oh, God. Edges. 
edges. Yeah, they look <laughs> business owners out there, you know, side hustlers, those out there pretending to do business. Um, <laughs> not to step on your toes, but I got an edge snatcher here, so that's what we're gonna do. You have to want it. Like I I can't want it for you right. more than you want it for you. So do you offer free consultations anymore? But this is the catch. We offer, um, it's called a fit to prosper. Okay. And that's free. That's a 15 minute consultation where I get to know what your goals are. You get to know what my purpose is. And if we were, if we're going to be a good fit, because I don't want you to waste your time with me and I don't want to waste my time on you. Right. So the fit to prosper is to see how we can fit in together. So if you come to me and say, I want to start a cleaning business, I'll ask you where you are mentally, where you are physically with the service, and I'll tell you what I can offer and ask you straight up, are you willing to do the work? And if your answer is yes, then we move on. If not, you some people actually say, well, I don't know right now. Well, I'm going to give you my information. You can contact me when you know that you're ready. That's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I think my internet froze. <laughs> I think you're back. I think we're back. <laughs> okay. That's okay. I like that because it's like, who got time to waste? I don't want to waste. I'm not going to waste my time and I don't want to waste your time. So let's just go ahead and see if we, you know, work together. I've had folks say, well, I just know I want to work with you. No, you don't. Not just because you like my Facebook live video. Right. Because I'm not here to play with you and I'm not here to play with myself. So right. that being said, I, I don't know if I'm a good fit or not, because if you're not ready to get into action, just keep watching my videos. And then when you get serious, when you get ready, I'll, 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 be probably, here. I'll probably still be here. I'll probably cost more, but I, I'm going to be here. <laughs> and so, oh, I like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, that what is the most common? Okay, what is the most <laughs> common um, excuse or reason or uh, bottleneck problem? Something. What is the most common one that you see people come to you with? That's not really an issue, um, but it's like a mindset thing, not necessarily a I can't do it thing. Time. Ooh. Most people feel like they don't have the time. Or I don't, I can't figure out how to put this in. And, you know, imagine somebody picking up my family and dropping it in your lap. What will you do? You will make the time if you want to. Everybody says that they don't have the time. And that's, again, where the structure and the scheduling comes in. You have to be structured. This is, it's not, it's not a game. It's not, we're not 10 years old standing at a lemonade stand making whatever we want to make because we just want to be there and we like being outside and then we go back inside where our parents pay the bills. No, this is a whole real life that we got going on and we got bills and stuff to pay. Right. I think to have, oh, there it is. Oh, oh, I think we went out. I think we're, are we out? Are we in? Are we out? We're still here. We're still here, y'all. We're still here. Like, I'm going to just move. <laughs> we're, still, we're still here y'all we're still here we're still here internet give us you know give us five more minutes okay so we can make i don't trust it <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking like somebody lying <laughs> okay so people out here saying they don't have the time what are some are there have there been people that you just had to say, you know what, I don't think you need to be a business? Or how do you handle that when you feel um this is a question for me? I, if you all in the audience have questions, um please uh tag those in the comments because we are getting ready to get into our wrap up. But this is a question from me to you of how do you guide folks when you, you know, you can tell from the, the fit session or you can, even if they've paid and they've invested in your program, you could tell they're just not ready. How do you, how do you handle that? How do you? Mm -mm. I shift in a coach mode. So I sit there and I figure out well, what, you know, so like procrastination. There's something underlining from procrastination. What is keeping you from procrast? I mean, what is keeping you from 
reaching your goals? Why did you wake up this morning at 10 o'clock when you know you had all of this stuff to do? You should have woke up earlier. So what is it? And it's usually something that's underlining. So you just got to shift um, to, to be there for that person. And so mm -hmm. I think that's what sets me apart. One thing that my clients know, I get texts all day. I get inboxed all day. I get calls in the middle of the night. And that's perfectly fine because I want you to have your mind in it. Yep. So you can get your money out of it. So you just need to, wherever you need, sometimes people just need somebody to talk to. And, you know, if my mom's working for this place and my dad's working for this place, my sister's working for this place, but I'm trying to be an entrepreneur, they're not going to help me mentally maneuver through that, right? So when you get me as a consultant or one of my other team members as a consultant, then we know that sometimes we're going to have to shift in coach mode. Well, what is holding you back then? Like what happened today? I didn't see you post. And I stay on their social media. Like, yeah. And then they end my to be like, take that down, take that down. What does that have to do with your brand? Take it down and don't put it back up. <laughs> you know, so I just, I try and I'm like the, we're like overseers. Like we just make sure that you stay. Oh, okay, cause I thought you was going, no, don't. <laughs> you know, so that's what I do for people that, they just feel like they're, they really want this but they, they feel like they're not capable or they feel like they're not ready. I'm mm. trying to figure out, especially like you said, you paid me already. Right. I'm trying to right. figure out what's what's the problem. I'm trying Sit right to here and let's I'm, talk about it because we're gonna get this done. We're gonna get this done. <laughs> so for any of you who yeah, are out exactly there, for any of you who are out there and you're listening and you are um, maybe in the market to get a consultant for your business, book some sort of session for your business, get a coach, get some help, whatever. Be sure to try your best, to the best of your ability, assess their hearts, assess their why, assess their work, get the yeah. receipts, you know, make sure they're real um, and can provide results. But what I heard was like, I'm here for you, for you to be able to make a, it's, it's more about you making a coin, you making an impact, you doing what you need to do more so than, than rush getting the glory. It, it has right. nothing to do with that. Um, and you make time for what you want to. That's what okay. I also heard. <laughs> yep. That's you what I had time, said. You, you make time for what you want to. You got the comments going, girl. They said, this is real good. That's good. Um, yes. <laughs> people don't value free. That's really good. Lord, lessons learned. So people are getting it today. So if you could leave folks um, with one one key gem, one key, I'm going to drop the mic and snatch your edges in 60 seconds. What would it be? Um, my biggest thing that I tell people all the time, it's not that we lack faith, it's that we lack faith in ourselves. And I want you to add, I just want to send this question out and I want people to really look at themselves and answer this question. In all of your life, how many times have you failed you? Yes, you have stumbling box. Yes, you had a hiccup. Yes, you did this wrong, but you got it. You always get back up. So how many times have you failed you? I can guarantee you, you cannot name one time that you have failed yourself. And in that alone, you should find faith and trust yourself in the process that you will take yourself through. We have all this faith in God. God did his job when he woke you up this morning. He gave you these and this, all of this. So what are you going to do with it? Fail yourself? No. <laughs> I'm not froze. I'm I'm just stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, I'm gonna head out. That's real. Wow, like girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we cannot be out. God does not build tables. He gives trees. Yep. He's right. not a table built. Like he, he, he gives trees and gives you an idea and hand. Exactly. Right. Yep. And if you're, if that's your skill to build tables, then you got to make it do what it do with that tree. Right. I, 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 yep. Wow. How many times have you failed you? Y'all sit on that question for the rest of the day or the week or however long. <laughs> <laughs> you need to sit on it because that's real. 
Wow. Okay. Edges are snatched. Ah. Uh, lives are changed. <laughs> You all, I am going to drop the website link in the comments as well as the, um, which social media platform do you like the most? Which, where can people find you hanging out? How do we plug you? What's the deets? Drop those and we'll be done with lunchtime and everybody can get back to doing the work. <laughs> yes, do the work. Um, so my favorite social medias are of course, Facebook, which you can pull me up under my name. And all of my links are there. It's M A I S H A Rush, or Facebook is Rush Consulting Firm. We also have a group where we mentor people, and you can ask any questions that you have, and me and my uh, me and my team will answer your questions and give you the information you need. We also have like a file section where you can fill out your SWATs, your avatar, just a whole bunch of stuff that you can afford because it's free ninety nine. Um, and that is I Rush to Success. The letter I Rush to Success. Um, and that's on Facebook. Boom. Wow. Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We thank you so much. I thank you for being in the guest chair for snatching edges. Um, Chantel in the comments said, what edges at this point? So that means <laughs> edges are gone. Edges are gone. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, you've <laughs> blessed my day. Everybody else is just an additive. I'm glad I let y'all come and get get a little bit, <laughs> get a little bit too. But I do. I thank you so much, and you have a phenomenal rest of your day, Queen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay! Bye.